and welcome back to the Earth on Survival Guide, the podcast for all disciplines, paths, players, game masters, and we are your questers, Josh and Dan. I am Dan. I am Josh. And on today's podcast, we will be discussing all things hypothetical and misdirectional, because we're going to talk about the higher tiers of the illusionist. Yeah. Excellent. You're shaking your head at me over there. Well... I usually do with some of the stuff that comes out of your mouth at the beginning of the episode. Fair. But the illusionist gets some really cool stuff. Absolutely. I can't wait to talk about it. So if you have any questions for us about anything you're going to hear tonight, anything you've heard about in the past 120 some odd episodes or so, please drop us a line at edsgpodcast at gmail.com. And we will get to those because we had a small little email palooza last time with like five or so. Uh, so we can dig right into the two minute rundown of the very special place that the illusionist has in the little earth dawn niche we've got over here from josh yes the illusionist is one of the five magician disciplines if we five if we count the shaman they are not surprisingly focused on illusion magic and illusions are sometimes weird sometimes difficult to adjudicate and run for. They're really, really cool and a really interesting approach to things. And at the same time, I think probably out of the four core magicians in the the player's guide, probably the ones that is the most potentially difficult to run for because of the tricks that they have and the difficulty that sometimes arises from having to handle illusions and whatnot. We talked, I'm sure, about illusion magic in general back in the original episode that we talked about the illusionist, which was episode 34 of the podcast. Then we did it with the illusionist spells way back in the... Yeah, we we probably talked about it again there. Illusions are, I think, a little bit easier to handle in fourth edition than they were in previous ones just because we changed things up to make it a little bit easier to avoid the edge cases that always cause the biggest headaches for people. Yeah, so the themes of the illusionist typically revolve around, obviously, deception and investigation, one of the sort of the flip side of the coin for the illusionist in terms of their deceptive focus is the fact that they are also interested in truth and reality because you can't effectively deceive somebody if you don't understand things well enough to convincingly portray how things might be of the four again setting aside the shaman core magician disciplines the illusionist is also the one that is in their way the most social in the sense that their magic is most in line with dealing with other name givers and with society and the rules and so forth that kind of spring up around them because those expectations are also heavily involved in the success or failure of their magical misdirection. So they're more like a David Copperfield magician. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. I'm just trying to get Josh to smile. That's all I'm doing over there. So let's get right to the nitty gritty on, on the illusionists. So the warden talent level starts off, of course, at ninth circle. And as I said, everybody gets something special and fun at ninth circle. The illusionist gets to hide matrix. This is just an ability, not a talent. As a free action for two strain, the adept can create the illusion that they are not casting a spell. The illusionist... Uh, rank is treated as sorry, the illusionism rank is treated as a spell circle to determine the sensing difficulty. Any character who could normally perceive the spell casting can make a sensing test. The spell cannot have a damaging effect, however. But other than that, you can hide the fact that you're casting. Yeah, which obviously, when you've got an illusionist who might be casting a spell that they don't want people to know that they're casting because it will help contribute to the illusion or the misdirection or the effect that they're trying to pull off the ability to make it look like you are not casting a spell can come in very very handy absolutely uh also at ninth circle the illusionist may now spend a karma point on recovery tests very nice thing to have and the discipline talent at ninth circle is new to the companion disarming smile 
Yes, this is one that we've mentioned a couple of other times. This is a social talent that allows the adept to put a halt to any hostilities that might be going on at the moment, allowing them the chance to negotiate or to defuse tensions or to escape, given the opportunity. If anybody breaks the magically enforced truce that results from this, there are some penalties that they suffer as a result, and it also provides bonuses to graceful exit to the adept and their allies if they wish to use that opportunity to get away. Absolutely. Tenth circle, uh, because again, you should be striving for all 15, because these are going to be awesome, awesome things to get here. Uh, You, as the illusionist, get a plus two to your original social defense, and you get a plus one to your mystic armor, because again, your spellcaster, this should come in handy. And your discipline talent at tenth circle is infuse memory. Infuse memory is a sort of straight up bonus. It's not a talent on its own. What it does is allows the illusionist to store images of a person or event in their mind. It's like book memory, but for stuff that you observe. It allows you to store sort of a number of these mental images in your brain. And then when you use material from these stored images in an illusion, it provides a bonus to any false sight tests made. So it basically helps make the illusions more effective. Nicely done. At Ilkel, the illusionist finally adds a plus one to their physical defense. And for karma, the illusionist may now spend a karma point to target an additional opponent with a spell they are casting. Du- duplicate spell is, is an illusion, whether or not the original one was, or, uh, allowing for disbelief or sensing tests as appropriate. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's a pretty straightforward karma spending ability, but the, the fact that it makes the secondary spell an illusion is just kind of a neat little bit of flavor. Oh yeah, it's a lovely wrinkle. And the 11th Circle Discipline Talent, Truth Through Lies. This is our first time talking about this one, because it should be illusionist only, I believe. Infused memory was also illusionist only. Unique to illusionist. Yeah, sorry. Truth through lies allows the adept to get information really easily. They make a test against the target's social defense, and until the next sunrise or sunset, whichever comes later, so sort of effectively for the course of the next day, whenever the target knowingly tells the illusionist a lie, The illusionist may then ask them a question which they must answer truthfully, and each success on the test allows them to ask one question. They must know that the target is lying in order to to sort of get the opportunity to ask the question, Mm -hmm. and the target must believe that they are lying, knowingly believe that they are lying. Even if what they are saying is actually true, if they believe they are not telling the truth, then it counts as a lie for the purposes of this ability. So it's kind of... And it can only be used once per day on any given target. Not bad. It's kind of like a, a verbal truth serum. Just one question at a time. Yeah. In a way, with but with a sort of particular requirement mm-hmm. in order to kind of get that effect to go on. Hey, it's better than nothing. I'll tell you that. Twelfth circle. The illusionist can finally add a plus four to their mystic, their original mystic defense because it erases the plus two and plus three bonus. And the initiative is finally two steps higher from their base initiative step. And at 12th circle, as all uh, magicians get concise casting. Yes, uh, this is an ability that we talked about both with the wizard and with the elementalist. It allows the magician to, under certain circumstances or with certain requirements, cast a second spell uh, in the same round as they cast another spell. Yeah. Most commonly what this is used for is you spend a a round or two thread weaving for a more powerful or higher circle effect. But then when you cast that, you follow it up with a lower circle zero or one thread spell uh, as a bonus or additional effect or whatever. And since that should not be enough for you at ninth, 10th or 11th or 12th circle, there are some options and you can pick up one of these talents per circle if you'd like to do so and since there's more than four it's going to be kind of hard to figure out which ones you want to get so the new ones 
uh, we'll get to in a minute or so that are new to the companion. A couple of these are going to catch up on from previous uh, circles that you, the illusionist can finally catch, like empathic sense, etiquette, graceful exit, lasting impression, or thought link. These are all pretty straightforward and tie into the social and mental and emotional connection and manipulation abilities that the illusionist kind of plays with quite a bit. Empathic sense gives you the ability to determine somebody's emotional state. Etiquette, obviously super handy for a kind of socially allied character. Graceful exit works very, very well in conjunction with disarming smile that they get at Ninth Circle. Yeah, uh, thought link is another good one. But yeah, just in general, some some really nice sort of utility talents that help fill in the the social kit of the illusionist. Totally. So the new ones that they also get as warden talent options to add at 9th, 10th, 11th, or 12th circle, armored matrix, which I think everybody gets, but still. Yeah, all of the magicians get at the warden tier. This gives them access to a an additional spell matrix that has a heightened mystic armor and uh, death rating for the purposes of it resisting abilities that target the spell matrix to try and damage it. Totally. And then the one we cut, talked about, I think an episode or two ago, astral pocket. Yes. Uh, this is a little astral storage space that allows you to keep some small items on your person, but not physically there. It's stored in a small astral pocket. Uh, and if something happens, then the items are lost in astral space and you need to find some other way to retrieve them. But it's handy for stashing stuff away. Since the illusionist does in some ways kind of overlap a little bit with the thief, that's kind of where this comes from. Absolutely. Uh, three to go. Range pattern, because I think all magicians get this as well. Range pattern is a enhancement to their ability. It's a, a simple action, but allows them to make a test to increase the range of a spell that they might be casting. Cool. Safe thought. Safe thought we've talked about before. This provides a bonus against abilities that try and read thoughts, emotions, divination, magic, uh, mental manipulation, anything like that. It adds to any active test, so uh, resist taunt or steal thought, for example, um, or any uh, resistance tests against like mind control and things like that. I think that's perfect for the illusionist to have because it just, no, you don't get to know that. <laughs> it just sounds like part of the illusionist toolkit of, of misdirection and so forth. Uh, and lastly, the last word and talent option, undermine. Yeah, undermine we've talked about a couple of times. This is a talent that penalizes the target's social defense pretty heavily. They roll a test, and based on the success level, the target's social defense is reduced for minutes, setting them up very easily for things like manipulation, uh, interaction tests, anything like that. It just basically makes them uh, feel less sure of themselves and thus makes them more vulnerable to deceptions and illusions and all the sort of stuff that would play with social defense. Fair. So on to 13th circle, because now we're into the master tier. Uh, this is kind of a long ability that they get, a long description of the ability they get, called manipulate reality, which I think is very cool for the illusionist to get. For one point of strain, the illusionist may add the keyword illusion to any spell that they cast. These spells may be disbelieved or subject to sensing tests as appropriate. The spell's target may require a sensing test to realize the spell is an illusion. For example, the illusory flying carpet will not allow the target to actually fly, but the target may not realize this at first. However, for three strain, the adept may remove the word keyword illusion from any spell that they cast, causing the effects to become real. The effects of this ability are powerful and unpredictable and may not have the exact same effect each time. The exact outcome is subject to game master discretion, but should involve input from the player regarding the desired outcome. They are a master illusionist after all, and should have some idea what they are doing. After using this ability on a spell, the next spell cast must be an illusion, even if that requires the adept to use this ability to make it an illusion. So, that alone. Yeah, this is phenomenal. <laughs> this is like the awesome stuff that I was talking about earlier. This is, gr <laughs> this is great. 
the illusionist spell list, there are several examples where there is both a real and an illusory version of the same effect. Ephemeral Bolt or True Ephemeral Bolt, for example, but yes. those are not the only ones. What this ability allows the illusionist to do is effectively have either an illusory version of every spell that they know or a real version of of the illusory spells that they know, which might do weird things depending on what the spell yeah. is. For example, you've got something like Phantom Fireball. When you get to this point, you could remove the phantom aspect of it, the illusory aspect of it, and essentially be casting a real fireball spell. Obviously, for like damaging spells and stuff, that's pretty straightforward. There's not really anything super weird that's yeah. going to come about as a result of that. But imagine what would be going on if you were to say remove the illusion keyword from fun with oh. doors right or any number of other kind of weird environmental effects or stuff that might be going on as a result of this some creative uses of this could just cause some really bizarre and entertaining and surreal if things to happen yeah this is good stuff. I'm just like the fact that it's an ability you get at 13th circle is just fantastic. It's not a, it's not a talent. You just get it. Also at 13th circle, the illusionist now adds a plus three to their social defense from their original number. And the karma step increases from a D six to a D eight. I got it right this time. And they also gain additional recovery test per day. And at 13th circle, if that's not enough for you, they get the discipline talent enthralling visions. Enthralling Visions actually works kind of nicely with the ability that they get at 13th Circle. What this allows the Adept to do is after successfully casting an Illusion spell, they make uh, the Enthralling Visions test against the targets. The targets suffer penalties based on the result of that test. So you could make any spell an Illusion and thus potentially use enthralling visions on the target or targets plural nicely done just gonna say and if this is not enough for you and it shouldn't be uh 14th circle the illusionist finally gets a plus five to their mystic defense and a plus two to their mystic armor so those are both at the same time and the discipline talent at 14th circle memory probe yeah, we talked about this previously. It came up when we were talking about the Thief Steel Memories yep. talent, uh, because this is what you were thinking this of, is what I was thinking of at the time. This allows the illusionist to basically read someone's mind. They can kind of pick up on the thoughts and impressions of the target and potentially ask questions to specifically gain information. So yeah, it's mind reading. It's basically what it is. And handy. Handy mind reading at that. On to 15th circle, uh, the illusionist gets a plus two to their physical defense and a plus three to their base initiative step. So all nice bonuses to have there from the originals. And then the discipline talent, spliced weave. Yeah, we, this is one that is available at 15th circle to all magician disciplines. This allows thread weaving as a multi-attack sort of thing. Rather than simply making a single thread weaving test, Spliced Weave allows the adept to make multiple thread weaving tests in the course of a combat round. And so potentially being able to weave more threads than they would otherwise be able to. Like if you've got a spell that takes four threads... Normally, if you wanted to weave all four of them in a single round, you would need to score four successes on your thread weaving test, mm -hmm. right? One for the initial and then three extras for the three additional threads. Yeah. So you would need to roll 15 higher difficulty number. than your difficulty number. Yeah. What Spliced Weave would conceivably allow you to do is instead make four tests, one, two, three, four, each against the base difficulty number, which statistically might be a little bit easier for you to do. Yeah. At 15th circle, you should have a nice high thread weaving step to achieve that number. So your dice should be nice. Should be. Just costs you a little strain. It can work really well with 
extra threads that you might be adding into a spell, things like oh, that. Oh, yeah, totally. Uh, very handy. So if 13th, 14th, and 15th circle uh, base stuff is not enough for you, there are a whole bunch of talent options that are new to the companion that will just flesh out your character nicely. You only get to pick three of these, and if you still want to pick some from the warden talent options list, you can, but there's only three of these you get to choose, so choose smart. Bardic Voice. Bardic Voice provides a bonus to interaction tests or any other charisma-based talents that affect Game Master character attitude. So first impression, for example, or lasting impression, or I think there's a bunch of them. Yeah. It just provides a, a straight up bonus to those, given the sort of social themes of the illusionist, particularly when it comes to deception and manipulation, uh, that could come in really handy. Totally. Uh, then, of course, the two pattern talents, casting pattern and effect pattern. Casting pattern provides bonuses to uh, the spell casting test and effect pattern boosts the uh, effect tests of any spells based on the results of the test that you make before casting. Yeah. And I see why that they're, they're options in case you don't want to be that illusion, that, that magician, you don't have to be. So it's not forcing you into those enthralling visions, memory probe and splice. weave make a whole lot more sense as discipline talents. Impossible hide. We talked about with the thief. That's the one that allows you to effectively hide behind anything, regardless of whether it would actually be able to conceal you or not. Totally. Lovely talent, uh, cartoonish second chance, which our thoughts on that are quite well known by now. Uh, shared matrix shared matrix is the master tier spell matrix available to all magicians. It does not hold a pre-woven thread, but it can hold multiple spells. The total of the spell circles contained within it cannot be higher than the rank of the matrix. So if you have it at rank eight, you could have up to eight circles worth of spells stored within it in whatever combination you wish, like a seven and a one or a pair of fours or four twos or whatever. Nice. Nicely done. And then Soul Aegis. Soul Aegis provides a bonus to both mystic and social defense for a number of rounds equal to their rank in the talent. This is a very nice sort of defensive boost. Totally. And the last one that the uh, illusionist gets as a master talent option, witty repartee. Witty repartee, it's repost, but for social attacks. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Uh, we talked about this with, somebody had this. The, did we cover the troubadour yet? Yes, the troubadour had this, obviously. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The troubadour got this. That was, I think the swordmaster might get access to it as well, but we haven't talked about the swordmaster yet. No, no. Witty, witty repartee acts as a, an active defense in the same way that resist taunt does. But at the same time, if you roll well enough, you can turn the results of the social attack back on the person that is doing it to you. Yeah. Uh, troubadour, witty repartee, 12th circle, discipline talent, but discipline illusionist, talent, yeah. illusion, illusionist master talent option. So troubadours get it way before that. So they get it earlier and it is, and it is absolutely part of their kit in the way that it doesn't have to be for illusionists. Totally. So that being said, I know another mancer is your thing. Wizard is kind of my thing. Elementalist is like my second option. Illusionist for me is always further down the list of magicians I want to play. But every once in a while, I have that idea of, man, I need to be a tricker, a, a, a trickster or somebody like that who's just pulling the wool over people's eyes. Thoughts? Yeah, I think of the magicians, I often talk about how if I am playing a magician, I am playing it for the spell casting and yes. usually will take the matrix talents and whatever kind of helpful spell casting related stuff I, I will kind of go with on that. Mm -hmm. I don't know that I would actually do that with an illusionist. I think if I were to play an illusionist i might look at really enhancing their social stuff the abilities and and talents in order to play with some of those 
social abilities that they get. Although that would depend in part on what the rest of the group makeup was. Fair. Because if there's a troubadour or a sword master in there, those kind of go in the same terrain. But in that case, I would be less likely to play an illusionist because I would probably play an illusionist to play a spellcaster that treads in that social arena. And I wouldn't want to step on the toes of a troubadour or a swordmaster because those are the two that would be in the same kind of performance aspect that uh, I would have an illusionist social be. As opposed to the weaponsmith social approach is a little bit different there. And so I wouldn't see as much of a thematic or stylistic overlap there fair so i would be more inclined if i were to play an illusionist to see how i could play around with the social mechanics because i think they are underused and really cool but i would be inclined to probably have illusionist be something that i pick up as a secondary discipline potentially Mm -hmm. again it really depends on the character concept and where i'd want to go Like, a troubadour illusionist would be amazing. Oh, no kidding. Just in terms of their ability, like, they already have some of the social manipulation stuff that the troubadour gets. But then to be able to enhance that with some of the spells and other abilities that the illusionist gets, you could have sort of the illusionist spellcasting be this just kind of secondary thing that they use to enhance their performances and whatnot and pick up even more of the social stuff that you didn't have enough slots for to pick up as a troubadour. Yeah. But you could also go with something that is a little bit more perhaps investigatory. We talked about uh, the illusionist, I think, back with the earlier ones, does have the potential to be kind of an investigator, detective kind of thing in their own way. And picking up things like empathic sense or thought link where you might be investigating crimes or mysteries and being able to read your suspects or the people that you're questioning to kind of figure out what's going on. Things like that would be handy. You know, when you're looking at the master talent options, bardic voice would be super handy for either the social type or an investigatory type character. Soul Aegis, super handy. The and uh, defense boosts that you can get out of that are really nice. Witty Repartee as a social riposte would be really cool. Obviously, Shared Matrix is probably really, really handy because of the number of spells that that could make available to you, even if you are not necessarily going strong spellcasting focus. I would probably lean away from the pattern talents, again, only because as an illusionist, I'm probably not necessarily going to be leaning quite as heavily into the spellcasting ends of things as I would with a wizard or a nethermancer or or even an, uh, an elementalist. It just feels like less of a of a necessity and i don't even know that i would necessarily take those with those other disciplines either because i think there are probably some stronger choices that you could make i actually think that the the illusionists if they did pick up second chance would make it work better thematically than anybody else i did yeah it was an illusion now i did this I mean, the the weakness of Second Chance is its limitation in terms of how effective it is in order to prevent the broken strategy of, oh, I'm going to take a super high charisma and raise the rank of this really yeah. high so that I can overcome any failures or obstacles that I have with my other abilities and just Second Chance it. Yeah, it absolutely makes sense why that is done the way that it yeah. is, but it also means that i mean the the illusionist does tend to have a higher charisma like the weaponsmith like the troubadour second chance could be a decent choice but i think overall again there are probably better choices that you could make oh absolutely uh in the the course there's, of there's things better choices any of those are better choices i'm just saying that this is the one discipline that could make it work thematically <laughs> as in hey i did this no second chance i'm gonna do this instead the first one's just an illusion yeah that's what it was wink wink nudge nudge it was an illusion go from there the advantage that second chance does give you and i may have mentioned this once or twice in the yeah. past is that it's not just any other talent use it's any action test that mm-hmm. you make 
So if it's a skill or whatever, the advantage being that second chance is a talent and therefore would allow you to spend yes. karma on it. So yeah, if you, if you fail at a skill, do your second chance and I can throw karma on it. Hopefully it's better, but still. Right. And if you have a high charisma, you don't need to have raised your second chance as high in order to perhaps equal the step that you would be rolling on the other tests that you potentially failed. There, there are some circumstances under which I could see it being a decent investment. I just, I think there are better choices that you can make in yeah, most cases. I have no problem with that. <laughs> Second chance, since we're kind of talking yeah. about this a little bit more, and I'm sort of thinking about it a little bit more. Second chance feels to me like a talent that is really good potentially to pick up under versatility. Yeah. Because one, in that case, it doesn't take up a slot from your regular options and it's available to everybody. The difficulty, of course, is finding somebody who knows it who would <laughs> teach it to you. Because you do have yeah. that restriction Who's with that? with versatility. You also lose out on the ability to spend karma on that additional test that you're making. But it then at least it makes it available to you as a possibility. I actually like kind of talking this out. It's a very high powered and requires a mm -hmm. lot of investments. A journeyman path could make second chance under versatility work. Better than just about anybody else. Yeah. Yeah, either either as a as a discipline talent for their mm -hmm. path, like or as a as a path talent, or possibly just having it under versatility because they do get the knacks where they could potentially spend karma on talents that they have through versatility. I, I'm I was like, yeah, these are situations in which it could work, <laughs> and it's starting to feel like really convoluted, like <laughs> <laughs> Let me find some kind of situation where I could perhaps justify picking this up. If you have no other choices, and obviously if you are a super high circle journeyman yeah. adept, you know, you've got access to a whole bunch of stuff. Second chance might not be a, a bad one to, to go into, but just as a straight like talent option for that tier, you've got three choices. I think there are almost always at least three better choices that you could make depending on what your I'm character okay is that. doing. Uh, thank you for breaking all of that down. Second chance, the illusionist wrap up and the whole nine yards. We've only got a couple of disciplines to go. So if you have any questions for us, folks, about what you heard today or how you want to build your illusionist, or you tell us exactly what you did with yours, we again, love to hear your story. It may not be on the air, but we'd love to read it anyway. So yeah, uh, that wraps it up. Uh, do not forget Kickstarter. For Grand Bazaar, running through June we'll have 14th. Ended yesterday Hold on. When this goes up. Oh, yeah. When this goes up, you That's will have the illusion. missed it. Ha -ha. <laughs> so that is the illusion. Had to look at the production calendar here real quick and go, what? when is this going up? So, yes, when this episode goes live, if you did not back the Kickstarter, you unfortunately missed it. Everything that was available through the Kickstarter will eventually be available through our shop. That includes the uh, should coins. include the plush. That should include the 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 miniatures, the coins, and stuff like that. Like there may be limited numbers. Like the plush, we will on maybe only have a certain number that are available, and once they're gone, they're gone. They may not go back into production. Similar with the coins. Once those are gone, they're gone. The miniatures will probably be available sort of on a on a longer term ongoing basis. The book obviously um, will be available and whatnot. If you missed it, I'm sorry. We yep. talked about it for a, a couple of weeks there and we're posting about it in places. Make sure that you uh, are following the EDSG podcast on Twitter um, or following me at Lore Merchant because uh, if there's interesting stuff in the Earth Dawn community going on, I will frequently bring it up. If you are not on the Facet Games Discord, if you were like if you're not into Discord at all, that's fine. I understand it's not everybody's bag, but if you use Discord, uh, the Facet Games Discord has a great little community that uh, will offer advice and assistance and answer questions and like-minded folks. And obviously, news and discussions will take place uh, and get announced there. So yeah, there's there's all kinds of places. Make sure that you're keeping an eye out for what's going on so that when 
another Kickstarter comes down the line, you do not miss out like you did on the Grand Bazaar if, in fact, you did miss out. So until next time, folks, it is time for you to go manipulate the reality for your legend. Good night, everybody. 